So in this video, I'm gonna set up the largest experiment I have ever run, which is going to answer the question, what is the best way to grow immersed aquarium plants? And we're gonna do that using my ebb and flow immersed aquarium plant setup just here over my shoulder. And to run this experiment, we're going to design it as a two by three factorial design, which means we're gonna be looking at the effects of two independent variables on the growth of our immersed plants. And those variables are going to be lighting. So we're gonna be evaluating the differences between high light versus low light. And the other independent variable is going to be substrate. So I have three different types of substrates that we're going to be growing our plants in. That's gonna be a gravel substrate, a clay-based substrate, and rock wool. And we're going to run this experiment in my setup here, and we're gonna see after a period of time, what is the best combination of lighting and substrate that grows the plants the best. And to make it even better, we're going to run this experiment with not just one type of plant like we did in the past, we're going to be using two different types of plants, and that being Anubias and Crips. And I think that's going to be a perfect combination because both Anubias and Crips have very different growing styles. Anubias is more of an epiphyte plant, meaning that it doesn't have much of a root structure. And in fact, it can actually attach itself to driftwood or rocks in our aquariums. And it tends to feed out of the water column a little bit more than from its roots. Now on the flip side, Crips is a heavy root feeder. So this type of plant is going to represent those types of aquarium plants that we have that really rely on their root structure to drive the nutrients and grow in our aquariums. I'm super excited to get this experiment going. However, I have to say we have almost 400 plants that we need to pot and place into our immerse setup. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. I'm going to use four levels in my immerse setup here. Two are going to be dedicated to highlight and two are going to be dedicated to low light. Now the highlight that we're running are LED grow lights that have a daylight spectrum and they run at 24 watts per strip. And I'm running two strips per level. And on the low lighting side, we're going to be running regular LED shop lights that run at 10 watts per strip. And again, we have two strips per level for that. Now I've used shop lights in the past to grow immersed plants and they do an excellent job. I haven't yet played around with some of these grow lights that are designed for growing plants. And I'm really excited to see what kind of difference we're going to get in our plants. Now with four levels in the experiment, Two of those are going to be dedicated to Anubias and two of those are going to be dedicated to Crips. Now we have one highlight for Anubias, one low light for Anubias, and one highlight for Crips, and one low light for Crips. So that's how we're breaking up the Anubias versus the Crips in the experiment. And lastly, we have substrate as well. So I mentioned that we have three different types of substrate that we're going to be running. So the first one is going to be regular gravel. And I have all these neck pots prepared behind me. This gravel we used in our previous Anubius experiment, and it did a pretty good job growing the plants. So I'm curious to continue using this in our experiment to see if gravel is still one of the better substrates that we can be using, or if a new substrate that we're going to be implementing is actually going to be able to grow our plants better. And for our second substrate, we're going to be using a clay-based substrate like I have here. So this specific clay is called Montmorillonite clay, and it can actually be found at most hardware stores as a product called Safety Zorb, which is an oil absorbent and acts very similarly to kitty litter. Now you might be asking, why am I using this clay substrate for this experiment and to try to grow immersed plants? Well, Montmorillonite clay is known to have a really high cation exchange capacity. Now the topic of cation exchange capacity probably warrants its own dedicated video. So without getting too sciencey, it basically means that this substrate has the capacity to attract positively charged ions and hold it against its surface. Now, why is that important? Well, for a plant, when it has its roots growing in a substrate like this, it basically means that the substrate is acting as a magnet to help attract ions that the roots can then uptake and use to fuel the growth of the plant. Now, because the nutrients that we add into the water of our immersed setup dissolve into ions, that basically means that this substrate has the capacity to attract those nutrients and hold it where the roots of the plants are located. And the idea is it makes it more readily available for the plants and can potentially help fuel its growth even more. So I'm really curious to see how this clay substrate does for our two different plants that we're gonna be growing in this experiment. And for the third substrate, we're going to be using regular rock wool. You might recognize this because most of our aquarium plants, when you purchase them from a fish store, is going to come in a rock wool matrix. Now the rock wool is more designed for hydroponic setups, which an ebb and flow system technically is a type of hydroponic setup. So I think it's going to perform pretty well. 
However, it does come at a little bit more expensive if you're using this as a substrate to grow immersed plants. And because this is new rock wool, I have been soaking it in a pH adjusted water solution, which is pretty standard practice for hydroponic setups. And lastly, to prepare the net pots for the rock wool, I have just cut all of the rock wool into their individual portions. We'll then plant either an Anubius plant or a Crypt plant, and then just insert it into the net pot just like that. And because I love running stats, I wanna collect some really amazing data as part of this experiment. So to do that, we're going to be weighing each individual plant as they get included into this experiment so that we have an initial starting weight that we can then compare the final weight of the plants once the experiment is done. Now, in addition to the starting and final weight of each plant, I'm also going to be making note of certain factors such as number of leaves and number of shoots on each of the plants. And this is going to allow us to calculate a number of growing indices once the experiment is done that we can then run some stats on. And to ensure we have enough statistical power as part of our design to actually detect differences once we're done the experiment, we're going to make sure that we have enough individual plants as part of each treatment. So based on the materials I have available, space in the experiment, and actual plants that we can plant into this design, each treatment is going to get 27 individual plants. Alright, so one more thing to note is that depending on where the plants are located within our growing containers, they may have an advantage or a disadvantage depending on how far away they are from the light source. So for example, plants growing directly underneath the light may grow faster simply because they have a better shot at the light compared to plants that are located more along the edges. So to eliminate this factor from skewing any of our results, I want to randomize this design as much as possible. So to do that, I ran some Python code that spit out a randomized grid that represents the three different types of substrates that we're gonna be using for the experiment. And this grid is going to serve as our planting chart for this experiment to ensure that I'm not imparting any human biases into the experiment and keeping everything even for the plants that are growing. So needless to say, we've got a ton of propagating to do. Here are some of the Anubius plants that just came out of my previous experiments. So we're gonna use these as part of the starting plants for this experiment. And I've also got a boatload of crypts that we're gonna be using as well. So let's get started. All right, so as you can see here, I have my immersed crypts that we're gonna be using for the experiment. In this specific tub, I have Crypt Wendedii, and I've been growing this for quite a long time. So it's pretty much at max capacity, and I'd say the plants have kind of stalled out I don't think the substrate really holds much nutrients and the plants are just kind of existing, but they're not really thriving. So I'm excited to start propagating these, getting them into another environment and seeing how much they can grow. On the other hand, I've also got my Anubias here that we gotta go through, trim up some of the roots, propagate them so that we have enough plants for the experiment and then we'll be ready to go. All right, believe it or not, we have been running this experiment for 21 weeks now. And as you can see behind me, the tubs are full of plants. So we're gonna take a closer look and see how much growth we got. But so far, the experiment looks like it was a huge success. All four of these tubs that are both growing, the Anubias and the Crips, are just absolutely filled to the brim. And I think they're actually at their max capacity. So my next step now in this experiment is going to actually harvest these plants. And we're gonna weigh them, count the leaves, count the shoots, and we're actually gonna run the stats to see was there a difference between the different light intensities and also was there a difference between the three different types of growing substrates that we used in this experiment. I should also mention that for this experiment, I modified the bell siphon so that the water level only actually rises and falls within the root structure. Now the reason for that is because in the last experiment that we ran, we were growing Anubias in an ebb and flow system where the water level rose higher than the plants. And I was actually having some issues with algae growing on the various leaves of the Anubias plants. So I think for this experiment, I didn't want to risk having algae growing on the leaves of our plants. So instead I've modified that bell siphon so that the water level only fluctuates within the root structure. And therefore all of the leaves that are growing are strictly above the water level, no matter what the cycle is in the ebb and flow system. And that way we haven't had any issues with algae growing on our leaves. And another difference is that for this experiment, I've actually used a new timer where the pump kicks on for two minutes every 20 minutes, and that is enough time to allow one full ebb and flow cycle to happen, but this only happens every 20 minutes. So rather than the previous experiment where we had the pump continuously running and the whole system was constantly 
uh, ebbing and flowing. In this system, everything is calm for 20 minutes and then it goes through one cycle of the ebb and flow. And right off the bat, there are no major differences that I can tell visually between the four different tubs, except with the Anubius tubs, it does seem like the higher intensity lighting resulted in more compact plants that seem to have more leaves, whereas the lower light seems to have larger leaves, uh, but fewer on each of the plants. So it'll be really interesting to actually count those up and run the stats to see if there's statistical differences between those two tubs. As for the crypts, I do think that the higher light grew the crypts faster, but like I said, we've run this experiment for 21 weeks, which is a little bit longer than I was hoping to run this experiment. And so I think both of the tubs have actually grown to their maximum capacity. However, we are still counting the leaves and the shoots for all of these plants, so we still might have differences that we can't see visually right now just from looking at these plants. And so in the next couple days, I'm gonna be harvesting these plants and running the stats on this so I can make a follow-up video. So if you're interested in knowing what the results of this experiment is, please stay tuned and check out this video right here.